naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. everybody to Iggy Garcia live broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the universe um, Iggy Garcia um, just wanted to say hi to everybody see how you're doing I know we're cruising right through the month pretty quickly and we're just it's just going fast 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 it's like uh, time has accelerated I just don't quite understand what happened so let's take a moment to just kind of gather our thoughts um, kind of get a little bit focused and see where we're gonna go uh, so I want everybody just take a, maybe a, we'll do a little, just a relaxing kind of one minute meditation, kind of just to focus yourself in and, um, and just, uh, feel, feel the music. Just relax, gather our thoughts, prepare this moment so we can sit here and talk with each other and share our thoughts and type to each other what we're going to do. So just take a, a breath in. And blow it out. Breath in. Next breath, take it in. I know most of you are going to be on your lunch break about right now or just getting back to the office. Um, sometimes we need to take these little breaks, these little moments where we can just gather ourselves back, <clears throat> bring ourselves back in. They could be very stressful. The night could be stressful. We all work different hours, so in this world, there is no 9 to 5 anymore. The 9 to 5 gig is uh, for only for a certain group of people. Um, most of us, like myself, I don't have a 9 to 5. It's whenever I'm working or whenever I'm working with clients or whatever I'm doing, so it depends. This show is a live stream on Facebook. We also have this being recorded and then be distributed out to the other networks that we work with. But today, I wanted to cover a little bit about PATH. The path, self-healing and labels, something that's been kind of coming up here lately in the last few weeks uh, that people have been asking me and addressing and wanted to know a little bit. Before we get started, we're going to draw some cards here and see what direction we're going to flow. These cards that I'm using right here are, are Power Animal Oracle cards that I use a lot, and the Stephen D. Farmer PhD is the ones I use. So we're going to draw a card and kind of go in the direction that that card leads us, in spirit leads us. The show is spirit led. This card kind of jumped out at me. And this is something that we, <laughs> I think we all have to deal with sometimes. Forgiveness, see that card. Letting go, letting go of our judgments. It's ironic that we're kind of talking about labels and self-healing and the path. Um, Forgiveness is one of those things that, you know, it takes a lot for some of us to work on. And for some, it's very easy. The majority of us, we have a struggle with forgiving and letting go and placing our judgments upon other people, other situations, uh, belief systems. Why we do it, um, I think it's just, it's human nature. I think as human beings, we tend to um, do things that are, <sighs> kind of puts us in a protective mode. You know, we kind of get into this place where we feel like that if we forgive somebody or if we let go of something, then then we're letting go of something inside of us that's not sincere and does not mean it. Uh, I guess if you're not ready to let go, you're not ready to let go. <clears throat> and you have to move forward with that. So I would just say, you know, forgiveness is one of those things that you it's for give. You know, it's the for and give. So you're giving. 
It's almost like a gift when you forgive somebody. You're forgiving yourself when you're working through those aspects and letting go. The judgmental part is actually the, the belief systems and how we have learned different things and different things in our mind that we are actually have collected over the years and over the over the time. And those things become, you know, very ingrained in our belief. Now, I want to say hi to people who are joining in the uh, live stream here. And I'm listening to myself. So I want to say, say hi to John. Say, say hi to Hal. Everybody who's joining us here. Anyways. <clears throat> so let me get started with the path. So that'll lead us into the direction I want to go. Um, so... Many people come to me and ask me, Iggy, so what do you do? What do you do for a living? And, you know, of course, that's a label. Labels are things that we hold on to, things that we believe that we are. And so how do you address somebody about the things you do? I mean, usually in the 3D world that I call it or the world that, you know, is very conventional, uh, it's very easy to say, well, I'm a doctor or I'm a lawyer or I'm a taxi driver or la da 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 la da Well, for me, I do metaphysical work, holistic work. I, I work with energy. We all work with energy. Um, I am a facilitator, read drumming and different things. So something was proposed not too long ago um, about, you know, different types of uh, labeling. For example, some people call me shaman. And the people call me shaman, that's the way they address me. That's the way they look at me. And some of it's just a nickname. But what's in the name? Really, what's in the name when you think about it? What does the word shaman mean? Well, in my culture, it means healer. That most people don't go around calling themselves <clears throat> healers, even though we are. But we are healers. We are all healers. We all are working on the aspects to heal ourselves. Can I actually heal another person? Can I actually make something different? Now, listen carefully to what I'm going to say, because all healing is self-healing. That's part of our topic today. <clears throat> when you're open to the possibilities to do and to bring into your spirit, love healing energy then you're healing now most of us go to a doctor and we expect you know we expect some of us expect that the doctor has the knowledge and the capability to say hey i can help you now doctors they prescribe they give their little notes and they say hey here you go take this because there's a system behind that how that works now <sighs> healing is for me to say that I'm a healer, I don't think I actually have more problems with that word than I have the word shaman when someone calls me a shaman. Because I'm actually more a facilitator, facilitating in the process. I'm part of the process. So it's not me actually going boom. It's me channeling energy through the universe coming through me, in me, and out of me to say the right things, to touch the right places, just to, you know, do what I need to do. And it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen because, number one, our egos get in the way. Our egos can get in the way. And what happens is we, we, we think that we're, we're the, we fix them. Well, we don't fix anybody. If someone's not open to the process and not willing to heal, they, they just don't heal. I've never run into somebody who just wanted to be healed, who healed just like that. There has to be one ounce, two ounces, 100 ounces, 100%. Faith to believe that at least you can something's going to change in you. Now the healing isn't always the way we want it. The healing isn't always the way we think it should be. Manifestation creation is super important. So when we're there and when we're moving the energy, we're putting it in places. Most people who come to have a session with me usually, you know, have an, an idea of what they want to work on, but it doesn't necessarily play out that way. The way it plays out is this way. Oh, I'm having problems at home. <clears throat> okay, you're having problems at home. Or my girlfriend has this. Or this happened this. Or I don't have this. What I see when I find out, what I find is those are the upper layers of things that we mask ourselves with, that we share the world with. Okay, but deeper, deeper down inside, why don't you have a proper relationship with somebody? Well, it's probably because there's probably deeper issues that don't allow you to be sensitive or open to the process of being, you know, open to this other person or to yourself. Most of us go around wounded in this world. We're all wounded, wounded little children, every single one of us. That includes me. 
I have things that I'm still working on. And that's good. You're always working on things. We have things, we have people, and you know people, I know people. Sometimes I'm this person. that hold on to things and we don't let go of it. And then we wonder why we have so many traumatic places in our body that hurts. Our body correlates with our emotions. So wherever we're having pain and we're having issues, it's because we're having issues in our mind. Everything begins in the mind. Everything starts here. It doesn't matter how to walk, how to talk, how to speak, how to breathe. It starts here. There's codes and messages that are embedded in it. And then it plays out through system. Imagine if you had to take care of every system in your body on every single day. It would be very difficult. It would be very taxing. You would probably be very tired. You're already tired as it is. So in our mind, in our brain, we just never see light. It only translates it and breaks it down and, and tries to recode it and what that would possibly look like. You know, our mind is powerful. It's a powerful place. This hub in here, this this place where we call a brain, we still don't know the mysteries behind it. We still don't know. They say we only use 10% of our brain, if, if even that capacity. So understanding where we start, where our process begins, and how it translates out through our body is important. Because when, when it starts up here, it manifests through us all through our system, through every point in our body. Some of us are very fortunate that we can actually move away from that and we can kind of dupe ourselves into believing that we're okay. But here's the thing. Once you harbor and you hold so much resent resentment, anger, frustration, it has to go someplace. And if you're not, if you're not releasing it to the universe and forgiving yourself and letting go of that judgment, then where does it go? Can anybody want to raise their hand asking that question? Well, for most of us, it generally goes into our body. It goes into our system. Then we become festered. We, we let it sit there. We become angry. Then our cells take on. Our cells rep replicate. Reproducing does everything. Every day, my body's changing. Every day, new cells are changing, making me another person. Within seven years, I'm a completely new human being. So imagine that. Imagine if your thoughts are that powerful and your thoughts are just so strong that you can create anything that you wanted and you'd create anything that you wanted to do. Would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to say, hey, I'm going to try something different? So how do you do that? But the problem is people like me who share these thoughts always say, would you like to change your life? Would you like to become a superstar in the world of the 3D people? Most people say, yeah, me too. You know, and it's a big pep rally and we're all excited and we're all going, yay, we're going to win. Yeah, we're going to win. But here's the thing. When you're going to win, you got to have a plan. You got to have a system. You got to know where you're going. So how do you stay healthy? How do you stay well? How do you, it's a process. Some of us, some of us are able to move into that space very quickly and very fast because we're tired. We're done. Or we just can't. Some of us can't. Some of us cannot. Some of us have to go and go baby steps. Baby steps. That's what I encourage you to do. So how do you how do you create a magnificent world for yourself? Within the world that you're already causing you a lot of frustration and causing you a lot of grief sometimes. And maybe it's not. How do you make your world even better to the world you are you're enjoying? Not everybody's miserable, but a lot of people are. Well, first you got to understand, is there an issue? Are there problems? Of course there's problems. Everybody has issues and problems. And, but I'm not talking about bills and I'm not talking about, you know, things that, you know, material things. I'm talking about the spiritual aspect of yourself. Where are your spiritual alignments with you? Do you believe on our past show we talked about, do you believe what you're, you're hype? Do you believe what you're saying? You know, what comes out of our mouth is super, super important. And if we share that with the world, then the world hears that, and the world records that, and then they play it back to you. So everything that you kind of get in your life, me included, it gets shut back at you. So if you say, oh, I'm ugly. Oh, I hate my life. Well, people can't help but hear that, and they go, oh, yeah, well, this person doesn't like their life. Oh, and, they, and then so it gets to the point where they don't even want to be around you. So self-talking is important. Self-so 
for the processing and self-healing. So if you want to heal, you have to self-talk. Self-talk is probably the most powerful tool you'll ever know, monitoring how you speak to yourself. Now, when there are people who want to gain things and have things and be part of things, uh, and they say, one day I'm going to be this, one day I'm going to be that, but there are no one days. There are no one days. There is no, I, I'll wait till tomorrow. That doesn't exist. Your yesterdays keep getting in your way of tomorrows, and so it messes up your moment. Because you're so consumed into the yesterday that the moment gets consumed by it too. And then you work right into the future, which is tomorrow, which is, again, the moment, which is yesterday. And you see how you go? You, it's, it's, it's like a circle going round and round. You keep repeating it. So, you know, you already know this. I'm not telling you anything that's new. You already know that this is happening. You already know that you're doing this. I do it. You do it. We all do it. Some of us do it better than others. Some of us don't even know we're doing it. That's probably the hardest thing when you don't know that you're actually doing it. You're actually self-sabotaging your own life. You're actually going and doing the things that actually you're hurting yourself more than anybody else could possibly hurt you. Yeah, you got beat up. Yeah, you got whatever. You know what? But we hurt ourselves more because even when we get hurt or we get frustrated or someone frustrates us, we have to be able to fix the part of ourselves that's stuck. Like if you're stuck in the car, if a car's stuck in the mud, what do you do? Well, most of us would call a tow truck. Some of us would try to push. There are different scenarios that can play out, but eventually one of them is only going to succeed properly. Most likely the tow truck with the cable on it will probably be the best solution for you pulling you out. That means that you have to actually reach out to people. You actually have to say, hey, I have an issue. I have a problem. There's something wrong with me. There's something that I need to work on. There's aspects of me that I'm not happy with. There's things I don't jive with. And most of us are so afraid to ask somebody because we're so afraid to release, you know, show the world that we're vulnerable, that we're weak, and that we're that we're in the moment of despair. But you know what? <clears throat> There's another part of you is going, please tell that person that I'm not happy. Please tell that person that I want to be better. Please tell that person. There's another aspect of you that is saying that. But most of us have been raised and been taught to say, well, don't tell other people know your business. Not knowing your business is completely different than knowing how you want to feel and heal yourself. There's two different ways. So when you want to change your world, and you want to move into the path that you're looking for, the path of enlightenment. Enlightenment is just moments that are enlightened by other people or how you experience people. Enlightenment is not this strike bolt of lightning that just hits you, you know, over the head. And if it does hit you over the head, you're probably dead in hell. I've been struck by lightning. My wife was there when I got when I got hit by lightning when the trees got killed. So I know, and it's documented and it's proof. So when I say that, I say that with a true heart. It didn't feel good. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we're trying to walk our path, our path comes in many shapes, sizes, and forms. And our path is how we integrate with other people, how we integrate our belief systems with other people. And our belief systems sometimes are the ones that get in our way. Sometimes we've been raised that, oh, we did things like this, and we did things like that. And then another person comes along, and then they do something completely different. And then what happens is there's no connection. And so there's no connection there, so you guys split apart. But then you find other people where the connection is close, closer. I mean, at least maybe it fits like this, not like this. But at least you're connected. And you guys can, you know, do a little wave up and down, ebb and flow, ebb and flow, ebb and flow. Okay? So when we want to heal, we have to be real with ourselves. We have to be real with ourselves and say, hey, you know, I have an issue. I have a problem. But it's, I don't want you to think of it like a label as problem, problematic. It's something that we just have to hone. Everything is honing. Everything in life is about honing. Honing the things that you know that you want to be better at. So we talk about paths. We talked about a little bit about shamanism. Most people, there are a group of people, and there are different camps. One camp says here, true shaman doesn't call himself a shaman. Another camp says, I'm a shaman because I want the world to know. This one says, well, a true shaman's brain will split in two or have some death, like death, uh, near death experience, okay, or whatever. So when you think about it, this is maybe in the mental state, a physical state, shamanism, exploding your mind and feeling. Who's to say a person who calls themselves a shaman doesn't have a metaphoric event that happens in their life? You can die and not die. You can be dead. From here up and you still function 
Who's to say that a word didn't kill you and put you in a place where you're not able to receive message from the world? Shamanism is just a word and it's a label. Most people use the word because they're comfortable with it. If my name is Ignacio, but am I Ignacio? Am I Iggy or Nacho? Is that who I am? Absolutely not. It's a name that was given to me so people can know who, how to call me and how my parents could either distinguish me from my brothers and sisters and to honor and respect the family members. You know, there was a time where humans didn't have names. They just knew who you were because they saw it here. They felt it here. They communicated that way. But now we use so many names. We, we create names and, and slash names and put them together. We have lineages with those names. Those names that we are labeled with, they have lineage. They have energy forced behind it. You can do research on your name and you will find similarities in personality, similar, similarities in different things. Do the research. What I tell you is true. If you don't believe me, then go do the research. Go do the research on your name. Go do the research on Susie, John, Suzanne, Karen. Find out where that comes from, what it means. Some of you already know, but go deep. Go deep because you are all the Karens. You are all the Suzannes, all the Susies, all the Johns, all the Hows that were before you, even more in your family. So we label people. We call ourselves Hispanic. We call ourselves African Americans. We call ourselves Russian. We call ourselves, you know, folks, we're just, we're human beings. We're all, we're all in this together. We're all one relation. We're all, when this planet blows up, it doesn't matter if you're Hispanic, black, Chinese, you know, Dutch. I don't care. You know, when we can't drink the water anymore and we can't eat from the land, it doesn't matter if you're whatever you want to label yourself with. Yeah, it's just a way to define who we are and recognize and split apart and say, hey, you know what? This is who we are. The humans, <clears throat> we're the worst, the worst of the worst. We destroy one another for power, greed, and for control. And mostly it's control. It's through control we can gain the power, the greed, and the money. When I can control you and your thoughts and tell you how to feel and how to think, it makes it pretty easy for me to do whatever I want to do. So be careful. Be cognitive. Be attentive to the messages you listen. That includes my message. My message is important, but my message is only to the ones who are really listening to what they need to hear. For some of you, you're just going to go, I don't get it, or I don't agree with you. And that's okay. I'm not here to, to be in agreement. I'm just here to share my thoughts, what goes through my mind, what goes through this mind of mine that I process and work. You know, as a child, it's funny how we label people. And some of you saw my post today about, you know, the panda, dyslexic panda. Well, I'm the dyslexic panda. You know, I'm the guy who, uh, when I was in school, I'm from a hat, so thick, big hat. Is that better? Now I look like a dyslexic panda. Anyhow, the reason I posted that today was because those are one of those dark secrets that you don't want anybody to know about. It's really not dark. It's more of a personal secret. I'm not a very good speller. I'm not a very good person who structures sentences. I speak fairly well. But my labeling of myself over the years by other people have caused me some issues in my mind about my belief systems, about actually writing and about communication, which took me a long time to get over. I'm not the best speller, and I'm not the best you know, and the grammar and structure and stuff. Um, when I was a child, I was put in a class and they used this word, mentally retarded children. Because back then it was different than the 70s, very different. They didn't understand that I spoke two languages. I was learning a second language, which was English. But they put me in a class with kids who were you know, differently abled, different functionality. And I didn't know why I was in there. I didn't know what was going on. My parents weren't sure why they wanted to put me in that class, but it was because they wanted me to learn and to read and write at a slower pace. So they actually brought comic books for me to read and read from, and I would read the comic books. And these comic books uh, had picture association with words. So if I didn't understand a word, 
excuse me, I had to try to do the association of what was happening in the in the in the strip, comic strip. So that's why I became a big, huge comic book collector over the years because that was something that I enjoyed and felt safe with, as something that felt, you know, that I, if I had that, I was okay. I could be part of something. But I wasn't really learning. I wasn't really progressing. No, there was really no label. No, there was no way to identify. And then eventually, over the years, when I got into, you know, high school, which and I'm telling you, grade school through middle school, I was struggling. Struggling because I couldn't figure out. I would look at words, and sometimes I couldn't understand what they were saying, the words communicating back to me. I couldn't read, like, long, long structures of words and try to break it down. The vowels, I knew the vowels, but I just couldn't take the vowels and, and break them down. And what I didn't realize until later that I had, I had a dyslexia form. But I don't want to own that label of dyslexia. I don't want to believe that. And, you know, so I've been working hard to not have that label not to be ADD, not to believe that I have some type of hyper disorder or whatever. I'm just me. I'm just made this way. God made me this way to read things different. I had to teach myself how to actually, you know, understand how to process writing and reading. I read fairly good. I write fairly good enough to survive, but for years it held me up. You know, it was a struggle being in school for me. It was terrible. I was terrified to go to school because when I had to go up to the blackboard and write something or when I had to express my 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 grammar capacity and capabilities of grammar, and, you know, it was I was terrified. I was so scared. I was so scared. I would rather die right there than to do that. Or I would just act out a certain behavior so I wouldn't have to do it. And it was it was it was horrible. And I, I and it played out through high school. And when I went to college, it wasn't any better. I, I did better, went a couple of years, but then I just, it was hard. It was difficult. You know, I'm fi almost 50. And to actually say this is kind of odd for me because no one's ever really known that unless only the people who really know who have been around me. And maybe some people just overlook my spelling. Sometimes I do it on Facebook. You, some of you have noticed. But it was, it was difficult. It was difficult because that impeded me a little bit, how I wanted to move in the world, how I wanted to do. There was things I wanted to be, but I was afraid because I didn't want to do them because I it, it or I had to actually have to do certain things that I wasn't willing to do. Now, it's not so much now. Now it's a whole different game for me. Now it's like, okay, bring it on. I'll do my best. But it was a time where I was just very apprehensive. And is that a cop-out? Is that an excuse? Part, maybe for part of me it is. But it was so real. It was so scary. Okay, it was so, it was so damning to me when kids made fun of me and when the teacher just was so frustrated with me because I couldn't get it and understand it. But she, you know, she, she basically gave up to me. But I had one teacher, Miss Doherty, at Holy Name. She would keep me in at recess, and. Um, I told her never to tell, let anybody know. I talked to her personally in my folks talk to her, but I did most of the talking. And I told her since I'm, you know, I, 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 this is why I'm in this Catholic school because in the public school system, I wasn't learning anything. My dad brought me and put me there. And I remember just trying to spell basic things. And I don't know why, it was just hard. But she helped me and she helped me with little tricks and games and stuff. And I remember writing some things on the board, thanking her. And, you know, it was, she was one of my favorite, favorite but not favorite teachers at the same time. But she took time out of her heart to teach me, to reteach me how to do things and to learn things. And, you know, I'm always grateful for her. I don't know where she's at now, but I always want to thank her because she, she, she's one of the reasons I do what I do today. Because I believe that people need to hear messages and people need to share their stories. And she always told me, you need to share your story, you need to tell your message. You don't have to tell people, but she opened my eyes to that, you know, I was able to do it. I just need a little belief. And not that my parents didn't. My parents, I hid it from my parents. I could just fudge it enough and get by. But she she knew that I was, there, there comes a point where you hit the wall and you just can't hide it anymore. But she helped me through that. And then when I got into school, high school, and I did better. I improved, I improved, I just got better. Am I 100%? No. But 
that's okay. I come to the realization this is who I am and this is how it is. And you know, maybe I'm not supposed to write the great novel. You know, but the great novel sits in my head, and I translate it through video, in recording, through music, through drumming. Maybe somebody else will write the story for me. But anyhow, this is how I live my life. So that's a little bit about me. I know every week I tell you a little bit more about me because it's important to know where I come from. Because I don't know where you come from. But maybe my story can relate to you. My story can say, you know, shoot, that guy can do it. I can do it. But it's hard. It's hard to tell people things about you that you really don't want them to know. But it's okay. I'm all right with that now. As I get older, I am getting older. And maybe that's that's the wisdom that you gain. That it doesn't really matter what people think. It only matters really what you thought. And that's what it was. That's my whole point of the story that I'm trying to get out is that we are our worst critic. We are our worst, you know, apprehender, the person who slows us down, the person who keeps us from doing things. You know, as a kid, I wanted to be a motivational speaker. Uh, and, you know, part of that dream's come true and part of it's still manifesting itself out. I just felt like I could say things you know, through the spoken word better than I could in a written word. And I know that still some writing is involved in that. But uh, regardless, and so that's why we've talked about our path. Our path is very unique to ourselves. You know, this path that we're on, this metaphysical, spiritual, human path, whatever you want to call it, we share our experiences with everybody. Our experiences are how we share with others, how we engage with them, how we see them, how they see us. So if we had a bad experience with, a certain way or a certain ideal then we're we kind of carry those little patterns with us and those little patterns you know pop into our ego and it goes no be careful we don't want to do that we don't want to walk that path because then it causes a lot of problems but the path is your path your path is unique to yourself your path should always be yours even when you're learning from others even when you're reading from books even if you're reading the stars reading the cards listening to shows like mine and other shows or if you have your own show your path is very unique and to say that my path is the only path is incorrect my path is part of your path my path mean merges with your path winds in and waves out that means our paths are meant to come for a short time and then weave out and then we take with it whatever we need if we take nothing of course i don't believe that's true you know we move in and we move out and that's the ebb and flow of life you know, we, we, there's so much beautiful things that we all share with one another. Beautiful things that we share in our hearts about who we are. But a lot of us don't listen. A lot of us only worry about what our story is about. Your stories are important to me because that's how I learn. And if I can share my story with you, then maybe you can learn compassion, you know, love for somebody who you know, who's having issues like that and understand that they were, they were afraid, they were hurt, you know, but now in your path, which I call path walkers, we're all path walkers. We all walk our path. Some of us side by side, some of us together, but it, we're path walkers. We walk our path. So am I a shaman? I'm a path walker. Am I a doctor? No, I'm a path walker. Am I a learner? No, I'm a path walker. Because you're walking your path. You're walking your sacred path. Your sacred path is yours. One that was endowed and bestowed upon you before you were even born. But you have so many opportunities to be whatever you want to be. You don't have to just be a lawyer, a doctor, a shaman, or a masseuse, or a Reiki practitioner. You can be anything in this lifetime. And this lifetime is long and short at the same time. So if you want to do things, imagine things, and create things, then do it. You have the capability of doing it. Everybody in this Everybody listening to this show has the capability. And some of you are doing. Some of you are hesitating. Some of you are waiting for the right opportunity. There are no right opportunities. I'll tell you right now, from my experience, there are no right opportunities. The opportunity is where it presents itself right now. This tomorrow is the moment. And as soon as you're in the moment, then the next time becomes tomorrow. So why wait? You know, get up. You can sleep all you want, 10 hours, 12 hours. But you're going to sleep someday when you finally go to the other side. So take advantage of every breathing moment that you can do something. Are you tired? Figure out why you're tired. Why are you exhausted? Why are you exhausted? 
Why are you feeling all that? Because on our path, we learn things about ourselves. We learn things about people. People share with us, show us things that open up our conscience, open up our mind. And, you know, we start to see things. We start to experience things. And we start to go outside of our little bubble. We start to go out of it and to see that there's more to the world. So as we start to do that, we start to heal. We start to heal pieces and parts of ourselves. Because there are pieces and parts of ourselves that struggle. We all have it. And these pieces and parts, we have to come back and reclaim them. So when people come to a session of mine, we do soul retrieval. We reclaim the pieces and parts that have been lost. Those pieces and parts are super important. Some of them will return, some of them won't. Inside of you, all through you, imagine yourself being like a big Swiss cheese. Anybody knows, most Swiss cheese have holes in them like this. When we lose a piece of ourselves, it goes out to the universe and just floats there, goes wherever it needs, to, wherever it is. But if that hole is empty and we can't fill it with the piece that we lost, then it's going to be filled with something else. It could be filled with love. Yeah. It could be filled with hatred. Yeah. It could be filled with anger, indecision, frustration. But it sits there. And then all of a sudden, we have issues here. We have issues here. Issues here. Almost every ailment on your body has something to do with an emotional trauma that you've actually experienced in your life. And where does that emotional trauma get stored? It gets stored up here. Upstairs in the, in the filing cabinet of your mind. Right up there. Just there, ready to be used again. So, these labels that we put upon ourselves, like I did, and like I probably still do, I don't even realize it sometimes. You know, labels are, are very dangerous when we label certain people. When we label ourselves as this group or that group or that party or this party, it puts us in a frame of mind that aligns us with ideologies that maybe aren't ours. But that's kind of the world we live in. That's the world we are. We are Buckeyes. We are Team Up North. You know, and look at me. I just said the Team Up North. I didn't even call them Michigan. It's a label. It's conditioning. See, that's that's when you know when you're aware of things. I guess that's when you have to realize the Team Up North is Michigan, right? If it's Ohio State, but it's, it's a culture. We create this culture and these belief systems, and then we start to believe that we are. I don't know that everybody watches sports, but that was that was an example right there of how we label. Oh no, those people on the west side, you don't want nothing to go with those guys. Uh, you don't want to go over there, those are all sneaky people. Oh, people over there, you, but you see we label. We label because we don't fit into their parameters or, or belief systems or whatever it is. So we put ourselves in our own labels, then we categorize ourselves and subcategorize ourselves and put ourselves into these different places. But when we all realize that we're not any different except for our attitude and our beliefs and how we we project them onto other people and then wonder why, you know, I put a little thing on the on the Facebook the other day about you have to be thrown into the, the wolves and then you come back leading the pack of wolves. You know, it's it's about understanding how you if you're gonna survive the tide you're gonna survive those things that come to you they can own you they can process you they can put you down you know and just hold you there or you can come up out of it when you come up out of it you have to feel a surge of energy for yourself a love for yourself and you know what you'll be angry probably for a little bit because you'll be more angry you're more angry at yourself for allowing that to happen to you and being duped and being loyal and being frustrated for allowing us, you gave your energy away, your power away to somebody else. Most of us don't even realize that we give ourselves away. Sometimes I do it, I don't even realize it. But we give ourselves away constantly. Constantly, constantly, constantly we give ourselves away. And that's why frustration, that's why anger builds up, because we're giving ourselves away. We teach people how to treat us. We teach people how to say things to us. Those people are actually just saying the things because they are so angry and frustrated. They don't, and so when they say it, we take, ownership of it when we take ownership of it we get frustrated so it's just a big game 
life's a big game. But it's hard for people to say, I love you. You walk up to a total stranger, tell them that you love them. I guarantee you that you know, two things will happen. They will look at you funny, or they say, I love you. Or maybe three things, and just ignore you and walk away. But love isn't like that. Love is something that's about us. People can see through it. People can see the, the genuineness in the side of us, who we are, and what we feel inside. And so, the labels, I want to say that they need to stop, but they're not going to stop until we start to decide to make them to stop, when we start to walk our path, when we start working on our self-healing of ourselves, the aspects of ourselves that are wounded. The wounded aspects of ourselves keep us in the place. So how do you get out of it? How do you get out of all this self-wounding? Well, self-nurture. How do I self-nurture? Well, everybody does it different. I don't know. Self-nurturing is completely a unique way in itself. Number one is honor who you are. Honor where you at right now. Even if it's not the best situation. Say, hey, I'm the best version of myself I could possibly be today. And I'm happy with that. And I'm getting better every day. The I am factor in how we use words is powerful. And then the work I do is understanding how you speak to yourself. I am well. I am better. I'm winning. I've won. Not I want to hope to win. Oh, he's lucky. No, he's lucky because he worked hard. Or he played the lottery and he won. So he's lucky? No, he actually bought the ticket. And you know what? If he didn't buy the ticket, he wouldn't be lucky, right? We wouldn't be calling him or her lucky. Luck is just something that someone says when they just didn't participate or aren't willing to do the work. Luck is one of those things because, you know, we throw around kind of like the word karma. Oh, you're you're a karma. You're a karma. You know, oh, he's lucky. He's lucky. You know, he wins. You know, you know, you make your luck. You make your karma. You make your dharma. You do all that. You have what you have today because of you, not because of anybody else. And if you believe that somebody else is controlling your life, then what would you do? What would you tell somebody else if their life was being controlled or if their life wasn't going the way they were doing you would say something, right? So, hopefully that gives you some insight what I wanted to talk about today. Give you some insight what I wanted to talk about today. So, your path is important. Self-healing is important. And, you know, understanding labels. Why we label ourselves. Why others label us. But, um, you know, go out and do the best you can. That's all I can encourage you to do. Um, don't stop. Don't quit. Because you are you are the magic. You're the magic in your life. I'm the magic in my life. No, I mean, there are people who can help build that magic, to contribute to that magic. And, um, you know, just be yourself. Be the best version of yourself at any given moment you can. We're going to have issues. We're going to have problems. We're going to have things that happen. And how long you stay in those issues and those problems is up to you. I'm not here to tell you that the way you're living is right or wrong. You already know the answer to that. What's best for you. Take your time. Be in the moment. Understand. Love. Honor. You are beautiful creatures. Just like I am. And you know what? Believe and honor. Believe and honor you first. So that way it's easier to believe and honor other people. Be trustworthy. But also be wise. And think. All everything that we begin with starts up here in our mind. Our mind is super powerful, super strong, super ready, and it gets us to where we need to be. So with that, I want to say thank you for tuning in on this episode of Iggy Garcia Live, episode 12, The Path, Self-Healing, and Labels. If you need more information about the work I do, you can visit me at iggygarcia.com. I-G-G-Y-G-A-R-C-I-A dot com or with insightsradio.com. That's actually where we do our broadcast, where you'll find these podcasts. So with that, you guys have a great month. Enjoy the rest of the year for getting close to the holidays. And um, just do the best you can with, with the tools you have. Talk to you soon.